Today's discussion is on a very effective non-invasive way of assessing the auditory and the brainstem sensory uh, pathways in human beings. So that is brainstem evoked response audiometry. Uh, brainstem e evoked response audiometry or it is otherwise called a brainstem auditory evoked response or it is also called auditory brainstem reflex or ABR all are the same it is very important especially in uh, early detection of deafness in neonates and children and also uh, in uh, adults also. So uh, today we will discuss what is this uh, BERA and uh, what are the uses of it, what are the indications of its usage, contraindications and how to perform a BERA that is how to place the electrodes, how to interpret the different wave patterns and also I will uh, show you the real time or the performing BERA and elicit in the waveforms in an uh, infant. Okay. So before uh, going to this, you should know the physiology of hearing, especially the central auditory connections. It was uh, described in detail under the heading of physiology of hearing. The link is given here. Please see and study that. Then only you will get an idea on uh, this brainstem evoked response audiometry. So, uh, there is pin now, then the external auditory canal, tympanic membrane, and there is a middle ear with the malleus, incus, and staves, the three uh, middle ear ossicles, and after that. Uh, the cochlea, vestibule and semicircular canal. So, the cochlea which is uh, uh, snail like with uh, 2, 3 by 4 turns and the semicircular canals. Okay, so the sound uh, signals, mechanical impulses coming, reaching the, through the external auditory canal, it causes vibrations of the tympanic membrane, then vibrations of this uh, ear ossicles, then this will cause uh, changes in the uh, fluid in the inner ear, and this mechanical stimulus are turned into electrical impulses by the uh, uh, hair cells. The outer hair cells are there, the inner hair cells are there. So the hair cells turn this electrical impulses, mechanical impulses into electrical impulses and also forms an action potentials. Okay. And you know that this uh, basal turn and the apical turn. So the high frequency sounds are mainly uh, causing vibrations in the basal turn of cochlea and low frequency sounds are causing vibrations in the apical or the apex. Uh, hair cells situated in the apical center, so apex of cochlea. And from cochlea, what is it? There is a cochlea nerve or the uh, eighth cranial nerve. So, is this eighth cranial nerve has got two portions? We can divide it into two portions a distal portion up to the internal acoustic meatus. This will be the internal acoustic meatus, this part. And from the uh, internal acoustic meatus up to the medulla, it becomes the proximal part. Okay. So, so the mechanical stimulus are turned into electrical impulses, and this electrical impulses travel through the uh, eighth nerve or the auditory nerve to reach the central auditory connections. There is um, 
medulla so this is medulla in the medulla what is uh, the deposition there uh, we have the cochlear nucleus okay so cochlear nuclei are there cochlear nucleus and uh, uh, the electrical impulses from this will go to the uh, cochlear nuclei and from there there is uh, ventral acoustic stria then there is uh, intermediate acoustic stria the intermediate acoustic stria and also the dorsal acoustic stria where are they going they are next relaxation is a superior auditory complex and they are situated in the pons okay so next is pons uh, In the pons, we have the superior olivary complex. Okay. Superior complex. And uh, that is in the lower pons. Okay. So, superior olivary complex uh, this is ventral acoustic stria then intermediate acoustic stria and this third dorsal acoustic stria okay Acoustic stria may cross to the opposite side at the level of superior olivary complex. Okay, so uh, they will come and uh, cross to the opposite side. Um, oh, three, uh, all the three that is the uh, ventral, uh, intermediate, and the uh, dorsal stria will uh, cross to the opposite side. Again, in the pons, in the upper pons, it is the nucleus of uh, lateral lemniscus. Okay, so. Nucleus of uh, lateral lemniscus. That is a next uh, uh, realization. So again in the pons, nucleus of lateral lemniscus. These two. Okay. So what will happen to the fibers? Um, they will get go and get relay here also, and they will cross to the opposite side also. Okay. The same thing happens here. For the uh, uh, intermediate fibers also will cross to the opposite side. These fibers will also will cross to the opposite side and get relayed here. Okay. After ponds it is the uh, midbrain. In midbrain, there are two uh, connections, two levels. One, it is at the level of inferior colliculus, and uh, uh, other one above that comes the um, medial geniculate uh, body or the medial geniculate nucleus. Okay, so midbrain. So midbrain the 
is an inferior colliculus level inferior colliculus here almost towards the midline and above that comes the medial geniculate body okay that is again midbrain medial geniculate nucleus okay and next level is the uh, auditory cortex okay okay and the fibers uh, will go through all this level from the lateral meniscus it will go to the inferior colliculus and from there to medial geniculate body and from there to the auditory cortex and both sides and the medial uh, mainly the crossover happens at the level of superior olivary complex okay so this is it cortex auditory nucleus okay and you know the pneumonium which is echolima right that is the uh, eighth nerve cochlear nucleus superior olivary nucleus lateral meniscus inferior colliculus medial geniculate body and the auditory cortex so it is this is a central auditory connections eighth nerve then cochlear nucleus superior olivary complex lateral meniscus inferior colliculus medial geniculate body and the auditory cortex so this is central auditory connections now what is this its relation with the beira waves so when the sound reaches at each of these levels the electrical impulses are generated and these electrical impulses can be recorded by placing some electrodes uh, on the forehead vertex and behind the ears and this is recorded for around 10 milliseconds the first 10 milliseconds and these impulses are produced by giving some acoustic stimuli so that is the basic principle of a bara. So we are giving an acoustic stimuli and the electrical impulses produced at each of these areas are recorded. How long we will record? In the first 10 milliseconds. And uh, we will get waves and these waves are there are 7. We are named or they are given a uh, number from 1 to 7 and they are given in Roman numerals 1 to 7. It is not written as 1 to 7 but it is written like this in Roman numerals only. There is one positive peak and also there is a preceding negative graph for each wave. And characters of this each positive wave as well as the negative graph is recorded and it is studied. So that is the basic principle of a Bera. In a form component. What are the? components. You should remember that we are not looking into the cortex. The cortex, cortical part is not included in the uh, vera waves. This cortex, we are not looking the integrity of the uh, auditory cortex. Okay, so wave number one. What is that? Here we are looking that it is a far field representation of the compound action potentials produced in the Distal part of cochlea now, eighth now. Distal cochlea. So, uh, distal, eighth now. From here up to the internal acoustic meatus. Okay, so up to the internal acoustic meatus, this is the uh, wave form, wave one. And number two, that is from the proximal part, that is from the uh, internal acoustic meatus up to the medulla or up to the um, brain stem okay so proximal eighth is the second and third wave obviously it is at the level of cochlear nucleus okay 
cochlear nucleus level. What about the fourth way? Next comes the superior olivary complex. Okay, so it is at the superior olivary level. And five is the most commonly analyzed waveform. Way number five. It is most commonly analyzed waveform. That is at the inferior corpuscles and also the fibers as it travels from the lateral lemniscus into the uh, inferior corpuscles. Okay, so from lateral lemniscus to the inferior corpuscles. And uh, uh, 6 as well as 7 represent what? It is the uh, medial geniculate body, both in midbrain level, that is the inferior corpuscles, and mainly the medial geniculate body. So, these are the different waveforms. So, if any uh, derangement, the particular part is affected, that wave will be affected. Okay, so one is at the distal part of ethanol up to the internal artery meatus, from the internal artery meatus up to the brain stem wave number 2. Wave number 3 is at the cochlear nucleus level. 4 is superior olivary complex level, 5 uh, lateral lemniscus as it going into the inferior corpuscles. that is the most commonly analyzed wave pattern and the 6 and 7 look at the midbrain at the medial geniculate body level. Okay. Now the next thing is how we can elicit or we can record all this. So for that we need some equipments, these are the equipments needed. I already told you that these waves, we give a, a click stimulus, auditory stimulus and after that some electrodes are placed and these recordings are uh, generated or recorded in a laptop. So we need surface electrodes. So surface electrodes, so there are four surface electrodes. The white one is kept at the vertex. So if there is hair, we can keep the electrode on the high forehead also. I will show the video. And after that the yellow is the ground electrode and it is kept on the low forehead. So vertex, one electrode in the vertex or in the high forehead. Ground electrode is on the uh, forehead, low forehead. And there are two more electrodes which are kept in the postural area. That is a red color is on the right postural area and the left uh, postural area we keep the blue electrode. Okay. So in the face. We can keep uh, one is the uh, vertex electrode or also the high uh, forehead. The ground electrode is uh, yellow and that is kept on the low forehead. And the red color one is on the right side, red and the blue color is kept on the uh, left side. So there are four surface electrodes and to give the click stimulus we keep and we need an earphones also usually the insert type of earphones are preferred in children and what is this electrode gel usually we use the new web electrode gels are used to uh, clean the skin so that if there in the interface if there is dirt or some grease in the skin it will lead to high impedance or resistance will be there and the real results will be delayed or there will be difficulty in getting a uh, correct uh, waveforms. So electrode gels, we have to clean the skin with electrode gel. Then you need a laptop with an ABR analyzing software and if there is serum or wax is there or the debris are there in the external lottery canal, there will be uh, erroneous results. So the ear should be thoroughly examined with otoscope or if needed microscope. Microscope because if there is fluid in the middle ear that in the otitis media with effusion or a secretory otitis media this fluid will uh, affect the real wave, wave pattern. So that has to be removed. If there is otitis media with effusion go for a myrgotomy and a removal of all fluid from the middle ear. In that case we will need a microscope 
along with a meningotomy uh, set also. So the persons involved in this are an otolaryngologist along with an audiologist and if you need some intervention uh, like a meningotomy or removal of uh, for, uh, for debris or wax from the ear, anesthetist and also uh, staff nurse is also needed. And you should be very careful while removing the wax or debris from the ear because you should not make trauma or bleeding and because this will interfere with the uh, results. So the ear should be cleaned very gently without causing any trauma or another important thing is that the child should be sedated or in a deep sleep. In adult sedation is not needed but the adult should be in a relaxed state and he should not move. Okay, movement will cause artifacts. That I will show you how an artifact looks like. So, uh, in a relaxed and it should not move. That is important. And prior to sedation, ask a detailed medical history including drug allergy and also history of any intake of drugs. And it is ideal to uh, go a nil per oral at least 6 hours prior to sedation. So, to get this waveform, you have to give some stimulus to the ear. So, uh, the stimulus usually given is a broad band click stimulus. Uh. And you can also give tone pips, but usually this click stimulus is given. And uh, this is given to one ear, the ear to be tested with the masking of the opposite ear. Okay, so uh, given to one ear with the opposite ear is masked. And what is the intensity of this stimulus? So if the patient is, uh, we are evaluating for deafness. The usually, uh, the first stimulus given is usually 60 to 65 dB SL, that is sensation level. In deaf patient, if the patient is deaf, that means uh, it is given at the level of 60 to 65 dB above the uh, hearing threshold of the that ear. And if it is, we are using for the uh, neurological assessment in a normal, normally hearing patient, we can also use the this for neurological assessment. In that case, we give at an intensity of around 80 to 85 dB normalized hearing level. Okay, so for deaf patient it is uh, SL and for normal patient for neurological assessment it is around normalized hearing level that you have to remember. So broadband click stimulus is given to one ear with masking of the opposite ear. Okay, now the uh, waves are produced and what are, what are things you have to specifically look into the waves for uh, assessment of any disease or hearing levels. Okay.